All right, just say when. <laughs> we are live. Hmm. Did you ever lecture a college class? Did you ever hack a Billy Bass? Roll a race car, race a rolls, fill a microchip with holes. Are you too cool to be a nerd, but too darn smart for the cool kid heard? Have you worn a rhinestone cowboy suit, played surf music for who? Did you build a guitar for Jonathan Colton? Fuse fiber optics from glass that was molten. Start a lab fire by mistake, make real chips in an easy bake. Try to weld before you learned, laugh a lot when you got burned. Hear a four-year-old explain electrons and know which wire the things collect on. Did you ever watch a webcast show? Then here's a thing you probably know. If you haven't done these things, you should. These things are fun, and fun is good. Well, here we are, finally, in a decent resolution. <sighs> <laughs> No, no uh, frame jumping? No frame jumping. We're, uh, we're, we were going for infinite this time. I think that we've got the bandwidth. Uh, we are uh, dedicating this little show thing, such as it is, to you guys, to Nauticon, to Block Party. Uh, we try to make our show a safe place for you guys to uh, make your mistakes and have your breakthroughs and have your fun. And part of that, we model after what we, uh, what we picked up here. We're also very grateful for how we got our start. Right here. Right here. Last doing, year. Last year doing this. That sounds horrible. Well, I remember what I said after the last one. I said, does Never, anyone, never does, again. Does anyone have an ass I could lick to get the flavor out of my mouth? Uh, cocaine. Cocaine, the delicious energy drink. <laughs> so, uh, Jerry, we, uh, uh, we had a thing we were going to do here. We were going to, uh, let's see, that's part one is the that. dedication, then the introduction, how we met. Right here, well, we just did that. Yes, didn't we? and we met here doing a... Uh, we didn't even meet until the second day, right? That's right. We just kind of wandered past each other. I'm like, who's this kind of goofy guy with the big hair that uh, you know, made strange comments? And... and I said the same thing as I passed a mirror. <laughs> um, but Jason Scott somehow had the vision of us two uh, being friendable. And uh, he encouraged us to meet, and we did. Uh, she asked me if I wanted to participate in this strange demo she was making out of hardware. That's right. I had to. I was doing an FPGA demo, but I didn't have original music. And so I, I had I, to quickly come up with I was just using you. And I had nothing but. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, so we uh, lucked into winning the wild card competition. Uh, we got all full of ourselves. And uh, she wanted to work on a project about six months later. We, we started talking, we, we tried to... Uh, yeah, like, what can we do with FPGAs and music? And it was just real free form, just like, uh -huh. well, let's glue it to a keyboard, let's glue it to a guitar, and... Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's, let's come up with something that, uh, that a nerd can go into a, a guitar store and not feel like, uh, oh, I guess I'm not evil enough to have this black guitar with flames on it. You know, we want him to be able to go in there and, and find the, the Jerry where's Ellsworth the, model. Or where's where's the, the freaking lasers? Where's the freaking lasers? Yeah. I don't ask for much, throw me a bone. So, uh, so something for, uh, so we got this idea then that there are some people who are too smart to be cool and too cool to be nerds. And uh, we later on called them scientists. But as we were trying to think of what product <laughs> we're gonna get rich off of, we, we every time we'd go toward that rich thing, we'd be, yeah, but then we'd be getting rich. We'd be like in the manufacturing business and that'd be gross. Okay, let's start over. So let's uh, rethink this. Okay, we could do this. And, but every time we get around to prototyping something, we get really excited. Um, and so we drew this little circle of, okay, this is our center. This is what we do. We prototype shit. And we talk about ideas, because we like this. We could do it. We're doing this. So we're ready. Okay, and there's this little circle. And there we are in the middle. And people can watch us do it. 
and they'll get sucked into the vortex, and it'll be fun. And if there's a way to make a living great, then if there's not, we'll be having fun. Yeah, just do it until yeah. we're not having fun, and then we stop. So the, the, but, the plan hasn't really improved since then. But oh. the, <laughs> <laughs> we're still having lots of fun. We are, and you guys have, uh, have joined in and helped us. So, so that's uh, uh, that. Point two. Okay. okay, that's how we met. Now, what the show is about, it's about the prototyping and stuff. And then, normally, we'd move into the things. But well, maybe we should talk about a little bit more about the format before we get into the techie stuff that all, oh, all okay. our friends are here to hear about. Okay, you take it, take it a little bit here. Let's see. You know, okay, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> every, every week we get together. You're in Austin, I'm in Portland, and we have other friends around the world that Skype in, and it, and we, the two of us try to get three inventions a week that we rapid prototyping, kind of like this thing. Yeah. And uh, we present it to each other like bringing a uh, dead mouse to Yes, one yes, seat. here, I hope this pleases you. Well, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you may not understand it, but it's all I have, it's my dead mouse. So we call them the dead mice. And sometimes we tell each other in advance and sometimes we try to surprise each other so we can get the other to laugh their cocaine out their nose <laughs> and say never again. Oh, that's poison. <laughs> and I sometimes spectacularly explode all over the place, yeah. right? Yeah, we've learned to embrace our failures uh, as much as our successes, and I think that uh, y'all have too. Um, and I think that if we continue to do this, uh, we will eventually all be enlightened, not, not understanding that there ever was a difference between good and bad. Uh, and and we'll, we'll like these long mistakes, and uh, we'll all understand free jazz. I think that's kind of my uh, way of looking at it. <laughs> I don't know, George. <laughs> Not enough TLAs in that one. So, uh, we're, we're, uh, uh, we share our hacks with each other, then we do a little crackpot philosophy in there somewhere, and then we open up to maybe some friends' hacks, uh, and then we usually get around to, uh, you know, where there's a train wreck or two, um, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, we'll maybe show a video from the internet or we'll talk about what's coming up next or we'll talk about what we did, we'll catch up on an old friend. We interviewed Ralph Baer, we were really lucky to have him. He invented the video game, perhaps you've mm. heard of it. <laughs> um, and uh, then we wrap up with uh, something Ion's been helping us with a little bit. Uh, we take one of my songs, she challenged, she laid a challenge on top of this. You know, she says, okay, on top of everything else, we want to give them a different tune every week. So uh, I, I cough up a different tune. I've been digging into my uh, archives for the most part, <coughs> but at some point I'm going to have to start writing these. And uh, there's no end limit. So every week from now until we stop having fun, I'm coughing up a tune and you'll hear something new uh, on the internet. And Ion's been putting the words on them for us. So uh, thank you, Ion. Um, and then that's the first hour of the show. And that's the show. Then the second well, hour, the, the first hour that sometimes turns into yeah, an hour and a half. Yeah. Or, it's a, it's a, a British hour. They're different. And uh, then Jerry says her famous catchphrase, which is... Did anyone bring a hack? And then the, the switchboard lights up, as they say. And, and uh, anyone who has Skype and a webcam uh, and a circuit board on their desk in a pile of hot glue uh, Skypes in and says... Well, actually, this is what I've been doing. Actually, technically, this is what I do. And, and we find precisely. that these, precisely, precisely. And, and we find we find that these are wonderful, wonderful people with great ideas. Sometimes they're four years old, and sometimes I, yeah. So four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. Little circuit girl, we call her short circuit. <laughs> and uh, uh, we've just spread out uh, uh, into a wonderful circle of friends. And we don't know where it's headed, but it's supportive. Um, and uh, we're, what I'm hoping to do is maybe at some point aim some employers at this group and say, look, there's a certain type of brain that hangs out here. Or at least maybe it's a common kind of brain. But whatever it is, the people hanging out here are of a state of mind that they just glow. And if you can capture them from this area and bring that glow into your workplace, you're going to have something really dynamic. Um, and so hopefully that'll pay off for the employers, that'll pay off for you guys. I don't know exactly if that's the best. You know, it kind of feels like 
talking to the old school com homebrew computer club from Silicon Valley, talking to those guys, it kind of feels like that because each week we have people coming and showing us incremental increases in uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, incremental. Yeah. It's like, well, you know what you were saying about the, uh, about the lasers, George, you know, I found out, yeah. Uh, no, the picture isn't captured in each point of the, of the, of the hologram, but it's, it's this. And someone else says, well, well, what kind of lasers are you using? Well, I've been working on and But there's a thread that goes through it, and everyone's getting massively smarter, which is weird because they're already massively smart. So it's a, a, an expanding black hole of dimensional smartiness. It's a smarty party. Uh, and it's, it's a club whose among our goals is to open the club as much as we can. We don't want it to be the island of the nerds. We want artists to come in and say, well, actually, ooh, that was fun to say. Well, actually, <laughs> vibrations are the same thing. And, you know, and, and get, get the scientists, get, 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 get us to our edge. Get the scientists to the interesting part of science where it's not repeatable. All the great inventor, inventors who moved science forward had to come across a place where it wasn't science yet, which means it was bullshit. <laughs> they had to go into the bullshit zone and find out what about that was repeatable. Everything that wasn't known at some time wasn't repeatable. That means it was doubtable. That means it wasn't science. So every time you make new science, you have to go to the bullshit zone, which is the artist's own. And the artist will give it to you, too, because as soon as you figure out technically how to do something that isn't science and you turn it into science, it's not interesting to the artists anymore. So if you learn to do, uh, if you learn to do mind reading scientifically, we'll gracefully give that to you and say, well, everyone does mind reading. Here's what's really interesting. Um, so, so it's a really good match, and, this, and the artists love getting exposed to what real science is because it, 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 it helps them, and it's, it helps them ground themselves, and it helps them learn to do their taxes. And I'm reading this while you think of the next thing to say. Okay. Some of the things. Oh, normally we would go into some of the things that we have made on the show, but first we would like to talk about the technology that we use. Jerry, what is technology, and how do we, we use it? <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's, it's pretty incredible that we can do this, that we can have three Skype streams coming in, return video, all getting mixed, compressed, and sent back through Ustream or Stickcam, and that, it, that you can do this all on a single cable modem. So the setup I have takes four computers, it takes a video mixer, and, and a, just a cable line and we're able to do this. Um, granted, you could probably do this with a little bit less, but I nerded out on all the hardware. Yeah, yeah, I wanted, when she explained it to you, I, I, I thought, uh, I wanted you guys to know that you could, you could do this just by plugging in your webcam into Ustream, okay? And they've even got a really clunky way to bring in a guest on Ustream. So we could have just done that. But I also wanted her to, to say, well, she, she happens to be working for New Tech. They happen to be, you know, a company that makes video switchers that you can carry around. Uh, and I happen to raid their junk bins and assemble a couple TriCasters for the studio. How do these things happen? We don't know, but somehow. So, <laughs> so we could do the wipes, and every once in a while we, we trip over a button. and. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you look back it. here, you see that uh, there's jump cuts all over. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun. All right. So uh, some of the things, that we do, do you want to get any further into the technology? or is that No, to, you know, yeah. I think you yeah. know, if you have questions, come ask us. Okay, some of the things that we have done. We could use the list, I guess. But you liked the Leslie. Oh, last week George put together a Leslie speaker, which is a rotating speaker, but he made it out of a ceiling fan. Yeah, yeah, and it's hanging off of one of those uh, uh, home and garden uh, white wire benches, right? So I got this white wire bench, and I've cable tied one ceiling fan to it, and then I put these heavy speakers onto it, and then I've, uh, I've hot glued uh, PVC fittings to the back to, to, to block the sound from the back. So you've got these like uh, three pound weights on. Yeah, and I, I watched you put this together all week. We usually leave our cameras on in the lab so you can just tune in and watch us when we're working on projects. And I was like, wow, that's cool. He's got it working. It's working really good. It looks fairly balanced. 
what happened when you uh, turned it on during the live show in front of... Oh, you guys know that, uh, that video of the uh, bridge that resonates and then... <laughs> <laughs> so I get out the strap, right? And it's going through the Vox amp, right? It's, it's going sounding to great. And I'm like, all right, here we go. Open A, wang, and it goes... It's like Steppenwolf. And then it starts, wait a minute, that's not just my heart that's dancing, it's the whole wire shelf, it's going like this. One of the fans leaps off, hits the drum kit, the whole thing goes out of balance, and falls off into a bucket, I swear to God, of beer bottles. <laughs> and I'm on the, the far side here, I'm in Portland, I'm seeing this happen on a little, yeah. uh, it's a little <laughs> screen, I'm like... Everything kind of went quiet. I'm like, George, are you okay? And then it goes, <laughs> <laughs> Both sides of the country, you know? The chat <laughs> room is just going crazy. They're like, Whoa, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> and uh, uh, see, so you, you uh, once uh, we were talking about retro watches, because uh, Waz has a Nixie tube. Yeah, Nixie tube. It's like little neon tubes with numbers yeah. in them. And, th and the geeks were geeking out about we could... We could have watches like Waz, and nothing gets up my butt like geeks wanting, like, like people this smart wanting to do something someone else has done. You know, so, so art guys are like, okay, that's nothing. Okay, if Waz has that, we gotta one up him. We gotta one up him. So while they're geeking out, I'm going, oh, I know. You wanna get retro? I know, I know. You get one of those clocks that fl the numbers flip over, right? A flip clock. <laughs> you fucking glue that to your hand. And you, next, you didn't think anyone could do it, could you? I didn't think anyone would. I would never underestimate. Next. So the next week, she's like, I got something for you, George. And she holds up her hand. And it's like the Borg from the 70s, you know. Flip. <laughs> <laughs> I had to scavenge a gear reduced motor <coughs> off of a CD ROM. And I had a microcontroller to oh send pulses to this motor and machine a gear for it. But all in secrecy, I had to keep this one going. Oh, it was too good. All the stuff, you know, every once in a while, I didn't. She built this microscope thing for seeing if it, you could, if you had properly uh, soldered a ball gate array. Uh, this microscope can see under a chip, and that would normally cost ten thousand dollars. Pretty expensive. She made it out of twenty bucks worth of crap from the bins at the Goodwill. <laughs> A so, viewfinder mirror and uh, lens, yeah. an objective from a microscope and a little CCD camera. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice. She's made some amazing stuff. Um, and, uh, oh, here, 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 there, there was the Bluetooth chicken. Now, that was another one where we were t <laughs> trying to figure out what to do. You know, she said, well, I've got this. I mean, we could make a talk. Well, we could do Bluetooth. And then someone said, well, we could animate the lips. And I said, well, you animate it so that, so that it goes in sync with the person who's talking back to you. And you run it through a speaker. So it's going, I hate you now, I'm leaving you. No, no, you can't leave me. Yes, I'm leaving you. And pick up some bread while you're out there. You know, so you're going to be in the shopping mall talking to a chicken and having a serious conversation. I, I still want to get in the mass transit system in Portland and have like a breakup call on this thing with the lips flapping. I thought we had a serious relationship. The, almost almost any time that you get on, uh, go to Fat Man Circuit Girl. Dot com and uh, and go to the where the live chat is coming is happening. A lot of the times when she's not on there, um, there's a Billy Bass and a pole dancer, <laughs> and and something else horrible. And and you type into it. There's instructions on the screen. You type into it, and you can make the Billy Bass in Portland wag its tail and make it sing. <laughs> and then talk too. And yeah. talk too because everyone's talking and it's like, uh, Tufer says, "Hello, George. Where is Jerry?" You know, and they, they've all chosen their little voices. It's really sick and, and fun and easy, and you don't have to be smart. You just have to know the simple URL. And the, the monkey pony. Oh, the talk. monkey pony. Okay, okay, okay. So, so one night, a couple of years ago, I get drunk with Jonathan Colton, who's my, my favorite songwriter. And uh, uh, so I've got his number, and I'm supposed to be calling him, but I'm saving up my celebrity contact points for about a year. You know, so... so uh, about a year passes, we're, we're a month or so into doing our show, and I say, okay, Jonathan, I'm using up, I'm using up my points. So there's one thing I want you to do for me, check out the show. And he goes on, he checks out the show, he says, man, this is what I would be doing if I had the Kung Fu. This would be great. And Jerry chimes in, and she says, well, I'm glad you touched base, you know, we love your stuff, and I like to make 
stuff for people I'm a fan of. If you ever need us to make you something, you know, we'll do it. So he goes, well, it'd be kind of nice to have a, a guitar with some drum triggers on it. So I'm like, I, and of course, I'm like on the side channels talking to George, like, yeah, this is so easy. Oh, we could do this. We're, we have a rule. If you say easy, you're supposed to wear a dunce. Yeah, yeah. Anything easy never turns out easy. And also, I couldn't bear the thought of just that. You know, we're doing this for Jonathan Colton. So uh, this is how nerds do art. It, it, it looks like this. Don't ask me what I did. You don't even want to know what I did. Here's what I did. Um, <laughs> so I wrote it back, and I said, well, you know what else we could do? We could do this and this and this, and, and, and we could put lasers on it, because Jerry <laughs> likes lasers. And he types back, get out. So what we've got now is we've got this line six Variax acoustic. So you play on it, and it plays beautiful acoustic music, but it's all modeled in mathematics. So you don't have to have good, good wood. So now you can drill holes all over this wood without affecting the sound. So second thing you do, and, I've, and this is done, we ripped apart a Vocalist Live 2, which some friends of mine designed. It, it's, a, uh, it's a guitar unit that analyzes guitar chords, figures out what chords are being played, and then when you sing into it, it doubles your voice to match the chords. And it does it in a very musical way. So it's a lovely thing. It's, it's the one thing that I think every acoustic singer should have. So I ripped one of those brand new open, <laughs> the guy at Guitar Center says, do you want the guarantee with this? I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we ripped this mother open and hot glued it all over the front of this beautiful blue guitar, uh, or, you know, black guitar. And then, uh, uh, then I, I got a bunch of parts from a T-square and some wrenches and stuff and a, and a spring. And when you pull down on the guitar against the strap button, it's got a little rake and a, and a what do you call it? It's got a pot, that, 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 a rack and pinion thing that, that I swiped out of a volume pedal that turns up the volume on the harmony effect. So you're, you're singing along. And you push down on this thing, and mechanically, I haven't got this yet, but I haven't got this yet, the, 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 uh, mechanically, the microphone's going to swing up into your face. <laughs> and then you sing, and harmony happens, and then you relax, and it goes back down. So that's the monkey pony, and then she has advanced the art of MIDI triggers. Yes. So when we were talking to Jonathan, he said that, you know, on the Zendrum device that he uses, that he has a lot of problems with cross-coupling um, MIDI triggers, so you hit one trigger really hard, and then a couple triggers down will pick that up as acoustically or coupled through the wood. And I'm like, hmm, Wild Cypress came out with these new capacitive touch um, sensors. What if I took the piezo sensors from, that they used in the Zendrum and add capacitive touch so that we can eliminate any false triggers on buttons that you're not touching? From my musical side, I'm going, you know, there's a secret part of me that's going, you know, she's going to bring all this scientific crap to the table and it's just going to ruin the musicness of it. And she comes up with all these, and I'm like, this is perfect. This is solving the most important problems that nobody in the music industry has ever even looked at. But we had, but we had compromised, right? I, I got you to agree to let me put LEDs all over the, like every square inch of the surface is going to have LEDs yes, because, on what a did black I say? circuit board with gold traces. Yeah, and yeah. So, what was the thing that I said that, I, uh, that she's going to give me shit for for the rest of my life? I said, she said, well, what could we do to the neck? And I said, no, no, the neck is sacred territory. <laughs> so now she's like, I'm gonna get uh, like two weeks later, she's like, so the neck is sacred territory, is it? And, but but didn't, we, didn't, didn't Jonathan sort of say, yeah, yeah, you're not going to do anything to the neck, are you? Didn't he, he say did, something like that? Did. Okay, 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 okay. So, um, but on the next one. We'll build in the next one. Where's the money coming from for all this? I have no idea. He's going to pay us for parts, it turns out. But uh, uh, we're just having so much fun. Um, I think that covers some of the things we've done, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it covers most Is of them. Is there more on there? It's a home ship lab. And oh, yeah, home like ship that, lab, but, yeah. Know. For those of you, I don't know, I was raised, uh, I was told that they're like, what's a chip fab, George? Oh, well, I think that there's like, whatever it is, there's like four of them in all of Texas, and uh, they cost a bazillion dollars, and they're very exotic, and you can't even book time on them. And she's building one for home use. She's building a, she, she built a little oven that she could make that goes up to 100, uh, 1,000 degrees. Celsius? She, Celsius. And she can make her own little semiconductors in it, and she built it into 
an easy bake oven. Of course. How badass is that? <laughs> I, I, I'm a little scared to uh, let it run unattended since the Easy Bake Oven I chose was plastic. Yeah, well, excellent choice. The, um, oh, here, we've got this guide. So what goes into doing the show? Are we at a good spot for that? Yeah, why don't we just pretend we're doing a live show? We'll just do it as if we're, we were really doing it. It's going to be a little clunky because we don't have all the equipment, and we couldn't stream it because we took 100% of the... Yeah. the the inner tubes here when we... So, so what we do every week is we pretty much promise each other we're going to call each other, and then we don't. And then 45 minutes before the show, panicked uh, Skype ring, uh, half an hour to get the Skype to work, and then 15 minutes at the whiteboard going, okay, what have you got, what have you got? Okay, uh, I can't tell you, but let's just code name it. It's a retro pinball thing. Okay, retro pinball thing, and we, we decide how we map it out, right? And I go, well, okay, are you ready to rock? Okay, roll it, and I'm, I'm at I, like... Wait, 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 wait. What? Well, when the cameras isn't set up, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. always happens. Okay, no, no, no. Oh, I stepped on the cord. Okay, someone in the chat room, tell people it's going to be seven more minutes. <laughs> Let me do it again. And, and uh, 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 she's got like 11 people over at her uh, nerd lair in, in not Seattle, Portland. Portland. And, and I'm, I'm all by myself in my little place in Austin going... No, you have people. No, every once in a while I have people, and I'm going to get some, oh, i got some great people lined up to come over later. So, uh, so I, we, we say go, and I go run into the bathroom while she does this. Maybe. He was too smart to be a cool musician. She was too cool to be a nerd. And it won an award And now they prototype Whatever they like And redefine the world So fun Of music Of boys and girls Of technology And creativity They're the Batman and Circuit Girls Okay, Jerry, let's get straight into it. What hack did you bring for me today? I know you've seen this before on the live show, but I thought that our friends at Nauticon would like to see my Nintendo purse. And Ooh. at this point, if I'm still on the video, I'm going like this. <laughs> and there's blood spurting everywhere. <laughs> and everyone's going, LOL, Tufer says LOL. <laughs> Oh, and turn off the speech bot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone. So, there's, that's, I mean, what else is there to say? It's a Nintendo purse. Yeah, then we go into it, and it's like, okay, I ripped apart a Nintendo 1001 joystick and hooked up a little switching power supply and put a special battery in it and put some Velcro on it so I can uh, you know, stick right here. And Oh, yeah, by the way, I also put a Commodore 64 inside of it just so I could do some mobile computing. Yeah, you don't want to be stuck out there without your C64. And, and right around this time, I'm getting impatient over in Austin, and I'm going, well, you know, I haven't said anything for over 20 seconds, and this is all science, and I've got to say something soulful, so I'll say, now remember, people, this isn't about what we can do. It's about what you can do. So you go and get your parents and C64s, and you go shove them into a purse and pour some hot glue in there and say, Circuit Girl told me to do it. <laughs> or something like that. Now, I've got a hack for... Oh, did you want to keep going on that? Oh, no, I... Okay. Uh, I have and a And it hack. usually transitions like that, too, because yes. we have a little Skype delay, so we're, we're trying to talk over each other. Okay, talk, 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 okay no, 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 you know, and then my camera, patented camera moves are uh, me picking up the camera and making everyone barf. Um, and uh, my hack for this show uh, is actually kind of a historical and high-impact, low-tech one, which is the jacket I'm wearing. Now, I, I got mine at Disneyland when they used to sell these things, but I don't know if you guys know what this represents. When the Indians <coughs> used to kill the white men from time to time, the non-Indians, they would take their jackets as trophies. 
and they would hack them to represent what they wanted them to represent. So this is an American cavalry jacket that's been Indianized. It happened enough that it became not just a tradition among the Native Americans who, from hanging around with them, I find they call themselves Indians and go, what, Native Americans, when you call them that? Um, or at least my buddies did. And, but it's not, it was not only that, it was a little fashion in the 80s too for a while, so that's how powerful it was. But what a great hack, and it reminds us that hacking's been going on for a whole long time. And uh, you don't have to be uh, a genius, you just have to do something that hasn't been done before. You have to take uh, one thing and another thing and stick them together. And that's a good point. You know, when we're doing so many hacks every single week, you know, sometimes, you know, it's a screen and some hot glue and, you know, what's visually yeah, has yeah, the yeah. biggest it, impact. It, sometimes it's like, you know, I have a tissue box. Is, is that a hack? But yeah. then we also have our running hacks, too, right? Yeah, so yeah. that we have some, like, lasers. I mean, constantly lasers. Yeah, lasers. We love George, we've got a new application for lasers. Lasers, and then the chat room goes, lasers, lasers, lasers. FPGAs, you have the running uh, explanation of FPGAs, so you guys like that stuff. The, the kids love that stuff. Um, and uh, then we would bring up guests, wouldn't we? Yes, around the now? local guests that we'd so, have after we present all our stuff. So here I am. Uh, I'm going to start with a guest. Oh, were you going to start with a guest? I'm going to start with a guest. And this is Morning. Travis Goodspeed. And his business card is this circuit board. So I guess he must be OK. So Travis, what do you got for us, buddy? Howdy. <laughs> so this is not my belt buckle, but I took a TI circuit board, this here, it's the TI Easy 430. This is a $20 version of their $100 JTAG programmer, but to, for whatever reason, they only support the lower end chips with this. It programs by spy by wire, but not by JTAG. And nearly everything on the top of this board it exists as support components for that little USB to serial chip in the middle, which doesn't work very well. Um, in fact, to get this to run in Linux, I had to stick two syringes into the board and reflash that EEPROM <laughs> to make it act as a regular USB to serial port. So are those pins, regular straight pins that you've jammed in there? No, those are 20 gauge syringes. Um, wow. Some friends of mine moved into a house um, some friends of mine moved into a house previously inhabited by heroin addicts, and they had this <laughs> nice little box of a hundred individually wrapped sterile syringes that they left in a closet. Um, so I made this board, which corrects all of the mistakes of the TI design. And the, the entire top of the board has been reduced to that single chip on the left and the little brown component beneath it. Then I added um, like LEDs to watch the traffic, and the chip on the right would be on the bottom of the TI board with its own support components, and they never quite got programming over USB to work. Like in each revision, they try a little change to make it work, and it never does, so I got that working, and now I can run either TI's firmware on this device, or I can run my own. And I've brought out the... Um, port five GPIO pins to the JTAG connector on the right, so you can plug that into another board to program it, and you can build this whole thing for $12 in parts. And learn surface mount soldering. <laughs> Uh, the take home is that if you're at Texas Instruments and you want to copy my design, since I learned so much from yours, you're quite welcome to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So next we have Noah that has some virtual reality. So we may have to take... A he seems kind of 3D to me. Oh. Do you need the, here, that? Um, in a moment I will. Um, ultimately I'm hoping it'll be an augmented reality application. Um, but here. Augmented reality is reality which reality actually. <laughs> may I hold the mic for you? Uh, yes, please. Um, Augmented reality at the moment has sort of been co-opted by um, uh, fiducial marker tracking folks. Um, and uh, that basically entails holding a printed piece of paper with a marker um, 
in front of your webcam and your machine then renders a 3D object um, over that marker. Um, that is the uh, best looking lamp stand I've seen all night. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> um, let's see if this will actually kick in, kick in from sleep. I'm not very good with mics. Well, make sure to take it here. I'll hold the mic. Yeah, this is the worst mic stand you're gonna get all time. Out here. <laughs> Quite all right, hold on, okay. Is that possible to get this mic? Calibration good. still. Okay, there you are. Okay, okay, get it. Yeah, put your hand where, where they can see it. Here, can you do uh, that? Here. Uh, so, if, let's see, is, it, could you hit the R button and then uh, Z if you would? No, oh, once more. So anyway, this is a uh, tracking inertial um, glove, being a little finicky. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah. So it's basically a uh, paintball glove with a whole bunch of bend sensors, uh, variable resistance flex sensors, hot glued into the fingers. Uh, there are three in the thumb, a couple in the wrist. Multiplexer in here. So and seven, eight thousand dollars worth of. I know. Ultimately, um, this ends up being. I, I think it's probably a hundred and fifty dollars worth of parts in this revision. Mm. Wow. Um, hopefully, the, the in kit form it'll. I don't know. I'm hoping to to sell kits for two hundred, two fifty, something like that. I, I'm I'm not sure yet. Mass production would cost a lot less. Um, the whole thing's running off of an Arduino Pro Mini uh, from SparkFunch. Um, there's a lithium polymer battery here, um, and elbow. Uh, I look. This looks like pops popsicle sticks to me, right? It's I actually love that. Um, architectural uh, modeling basswood. Um, <laughs> which, uh, and but same same difference. Um, and this is. Did he say actually? On our show, if someone says actually, you have so, to drink. So this whole thing, <laughs> this whole thing's written in processing from scratch, and um, so well, there's an environment there, and if we do a little over-the-shoulder view, um, let's lose that uh, and reset this again. There's still there's still some gyro drift issues. The um, uh, hit R one more time for me, thanks, Jerry. Um, Dude, um, you could roast marshmallows. I can't even tell that this is <laughs> um, You know what? Here, let's do this. You said? And why don't you hit R one more time? There we go. Um, so, uh, come on. Okay, so there's a little interface there, uh, which is sort of the best I've been able to do in limited time. If I then tap on these cubes. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Um, you know what? Depth perception is a little hard without stereoscopy. Coming up, who's got stereoscopic out there? <laughs> you know what? Forget it. This is okay. Um, so then I can grab these and step around and place them. And so, I mean, it, it doesn't do much yet, but I think the implication is pretty clear. Um, okay, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Uh, if we want to, please. One more feature. Um, I've also, oh, whoops. There, there we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that joke's never been made before, in fact. Can you, make, can you make something that would keep me from playing with my balls on screen? Um, George. We don't have the technology yet. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, last thing is I took a... Vuzix VR920 head mounted display. It's not stereoscopic yet. Uh, in a previous iteration, I was actually passing the feed from this webcam into the processing app, but because processing compiles to Java, it was insanely slow. Uh, the, and um, I was using JMyron, which is a, uh, a machine vision library. I'm hoping to port everything to um, open frameworks instead of processing. 
and use um, and use OpenCV, which will be much faster. It'll be natively compiled C++. Um, but uh, for the moment, um, because oh, please tell me, it is so not working. That's a shame. I would have to restart the app, which I'm going to do if you don't mind. Um, well, while you're doing so, that, okay. oh, yeah. here the the goggles track. There's a built-in magnetometer in the VR920, um, and there's a processing library uh, for it, so I can rotate the field of view in the environment with the head-mounted display, uh, wh which is actually why I wrote this in. Um, if I had it hooked up, I could then, um, you get it. I can do everything that I just showed you in third person from first person. Um, I'm working on integrating a second uh, glove and a torso tracker and GPS and so on and so forth. So where do we learn more? Yeah. Thanks. So, so uh, we'll make sure that we get links to you from fatmanandcircuitgirl.com, but if you want to send them directly to your place. Um, I have a blog going right now. I'm going to move it fairly soon, but for the moment it's at augmentation.wordpress.com. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Wonderful thank you stuff. So much. And he's, he's got a robot replacement for my cameraman. <laughs> so this would be the point. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. we would be doing, uh oh. We would, we would uh, wrap up the show. Uh, we would usually play the, the closing number, but uh, we're going to do that after. Normally we would say, we would invite you to do something and you would do it with our community, but you know, you've got so many great people here. We want you to share your adventures and hacks with each other. Uh, but later on, we want you, if you like this, please log on to fatmanandcircuitgirl.com. Uh, if you want to support us, the best thing that you could do is drop our name into your user groups who you think would benefit from what we do. We don't care if it, I mean, if it's someone who will dig this, like a school, I can, I can keep from cussing if I need to, but if, if, tell, your, tell your smart kid friends, uh, tell your robot club, uh, tell your entrepreneur buddies who need smart people. Uh, that's your best way to support us and log on and play with us and build some stuff yourself. And then before we roll the closing thing, Jerry would say her catchphrase, which is? Did anyone bring a hack today? Da 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 da. So now we have a special outro from Robert Bernardo, who parodied, parodied our intro. So remember the uh, too smart to be a cool. So here it is. Stop animation. Or Robert, what is it uh, officially called? Stop it. Pop it. He was too smart to be a cool musician. <laughs> she was too cool to be a nerd. <laughs> And it won an award And now they prototype Whatever they like And redefine the world So fun A music A boys and girls A technology A creativity They're the bad man And circuit girl Yay! Hey, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. <laughs> Robert, there's our guy <laughs> and as you're piling out or as you're decompressing, uh, here's a, a, a tune that I, I wrote for, uh, uh, for Microsoft and that they ended up uh, eventually saying, you know what, George, we really don't want that because it reminds us of a time when we failed once. And, but boy. I love this song, so I bought, they paid me to do it, and then I bought it back from them because I like it so much. Uh, and the story about it is, uh, where is it? It should be on, the, uh, on fatmanandcircuitgirl.com, and if it's not, I'll, I'll put up a link to it. But here it is, Viva La Resolution. All right, well, legends and myths. Legends and men. What about them?
So we go to we go to the game developers conference in Santa Clara, and Microsoft decides to throw this huge party to launch DirectX. And they give they make the mistake of giving all us game developers GAC and frisbees as we enter the gate. So they start their demo of DirectX. They have us in a big theater. Now they've thrown a huge party. They fed us. They let us go on all these rides. And now we're going to go see the demonstration. And the thing crashes. So suddenly, out of the audience comes a big ball of gas. It hits one of the Microsoft executives right to the side. And then another ball of gas. And then a frisbee. And they're pretty soon a hundred frisbees. And all the gas. And the Microsoft executives are diving behind their computers yelling, We gave you gas! You can't do this to us! Thank mm -hmm. you.